Welcome back to another episode of Chatty Chit Chats with Chatty Mava. I am back today to discuss a lot about myself. We're going to talk about who am I? Like, who is this girl? Who is Chatty Mava? Who is Ashante? Who is this girl that you guys been looking at, listening to? And why am I like this? Just why am I such a chatterbox? <laughs> so we're going to kind of get into just kind of the history of myself and like, what has led me to all these different channels and avenues of communication and creativity. So let's get into it. So I'm the oldest of five girls. Um, I have four younger sisters. And on my mom's side, on my dad's side, I have another bunch of sisters. Overall, I have 11 sisters that I know of. Okay. But I was raised with four other girls and that is where kind of I got my nurturing vibe and I got my like teacher vibes. I used to always like create these spaces for me and my sisters to have like girls club or like um, where we would do scrapbooking together. I was always the leader in those things. I started writing poetry and short stories, plays and doing journaling when I was around 11 to 12 years old. Um, it started off kind of as a way to cope with certain things that I went through as a kid, like just not really feeling like I had a voice because first of all, like I said, my mom had five kids. My mom had a lot going on and stuff like that. So I just felt like I needed more room to share my experiences, my ideas, the pains, the passions, my jokes and things like that. And over time and analyzing myself, I think um, I projected that I was my ideas and the things that I wanted to share sometimes was too much. I assumed that people just wouldn't be interested. And I don't know if that's just me. I don't know where that came from. Like I've, I've sat down and I've really tried to analyze why did I didn't like I don't remember anybody ever telling me you talk too much like move go sit down like I don't really remember that but I mean it could have happened but I don't remember why that is like that why I project that onto myself where I don't will I will shorten a story so much more than I would want to tell a story because I don't want to overload the person or I don't want to you know, see that they're not interested because that stuff hurts my damn feelings. Okay. Um, so stuff like this would cause me to lose passion in my conversations since I'm shortening my thoughts to ease their ears and like make sure that they're good. My passion for communication through writing com um, continued with me adding like public chats, you know, AOL. Y'all remember AOL? ASL, we'd be like a sex location, stuff like that. I was obsessed with. I would also join like pen pal groups and stuff like that and have like pen pals from all over the world. And this was between the ages of 12 to, I would say, between 12 and 17. Um, yeah. So I would have my journals and stuff like that. And along with like these public chats and having pen pals. And then when I was able to get a phone and I was able to start texting, texting was such a thing for me. I loved it. These things fed my need for communication and creation for years. Um, even during my pregnancy, I got pregnant with Jada when I was 19 years old. And um, even during my pregnancy, I kept so many journals and notes just about my experience and things that I was going through. When my daughter was about five years old, so when I was about, I would say 20, 24, 23 or 24, I started out my first YouTube channel, which was um, Chatterbox Ashante. I can't even remember what it was when I first, first started. But what I can remember was Chatterbox Ashante. Nobody at that time, this was like 2012. Nobody at that time was making really personal life content. It was mostly like gaming videos and like, you know, sharing hacks and like things that were just not personal life lifestyle videos. So I started doing that. Like there was a few people doing it, but there was it wasn't the main thing like how it is now. Um, so... Yeah, I started sharing my life on there and YouTube was another way that just kind of opened up another way for me to communicate through videos now and engage with people, which that is and that's the main thing is the connection connection that I get with other people. Um that's so huge for me and having that it through comments under my YouTube videos was insane. So I was like this is it. Like I was obsessed. I actually slowed down on writing and stuff because I started creating for YouTube. Um my other social media and stuff like that came later. Of course, you know, as time, as social media grew and, you know, all these platforms became available, I was a part of all of them. On YouTube, though, I ended up, you know, I, my one of my dreams growing up was always to be a talk show host. I was obsessed with all the different talk show 
queens like Oprah, Sally Jesse Hansen. Uh, I watched Ananda Lewis. I've watched like all the oldies. You know, I, I was obsessed with them. And my dream was always to be a talk show host. But I knew, I realized growing up quickly that there wasn't a lot of space for me to be able to really be a talk show host the way that I saw it on TV. So I started thinking, you know what? YouTube is allowing us to create whatever we want. I'm going to create my own talk show and create my own lane and space for myself to be seen and heard in a different way that I may not ever get to have if I wait around for a real talk show. So I started this show called The Chatterbox Toronto, which was me just, you know, inviting guests on to talk about relationships and sex. And it was so fun. I did two seasons. If you're really interested, it's still up on YouTube, child. The Chatterbox Toronto. Literally, that's the name of the show. We had two seasons. In the last season, I was actually pregnant with the twins. <laughs> and that's kind of what stopped the show. However, I thrive so much through communication and connection that the these lanes of, you know, ways for me to do that was just so fun. I became so passionate, extremely passionate about creating videos and just creating and sharing my life and getting back feedback and just, you know, doing all that. Um, I realized that creating and communicating you know, as a whole together has helped me cope over time. Um, it has allowed me to help me see my growth, both personally and creatively, because I've I've grown as a person just in my confidence and just starting to love more of who I am. When I first started YouTube and just hearing my voice while I was editing was a problem. I was like, oh my God, I need to change my voice and stuff like that. And like over time, I'm just like, this is who I am. I love my voice. I don't even think about it anymore. Um, creatively, I've grown because I've taught myself. I'm self-taught. I taught myself how to edit. I taught myself how to, you know, make these videos come together in, in a certain way, you know, and I've gained so much confidence in living my complete truth and being my full self in all forms through doing that on my social media. And I feel like social media kind of made me feel like I had to be accountable in some sense and, and making sure that, okay, I can't be fake, like make sure that I'm showing myself. Cause a lot of times on YouTube, in the first few years of my YouTube journey, I was definitely copying a lot of creators and definitely trying to be somebody that I really wasn't. Um, just didn't want to be this goofy girl that I am and this free, fun-loving girl. I wanted to be like the badass girl. Like I wanted to be the girl that was just like luxury, beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And after a while, I just realized like this is just hard to do because it's not me. This is just not natural. I'm forcing this. And it was just really hard. Um and so, yeah, I just started becoming more myself over time, over time, over time. And I think in the last couple of years, I've really, really mastered living in my truth and not copying other people because it's so easy in this world and in the social media world to just copy other people and like want to be like somebody else because we see so much things on there that just, you know, it's so easy to gravitate to and want to be like. Um, but the way we are in ourselves is so unique. We each are so unique. And I was just like, you know, I just need to live in my truth. It's so much easier for me. And so that's what I've been doing. Um, overall, I'm a very dynamic, atypical type of human being. I have a lot of facets. And I've realized over time that my power is my voice, is my communication, is my creativity. I have so much passion that I'm going to always share through my communication and creativity for whoever has continued to be drawn to my content. And the part that now I'm going to get into is just talking about what is just talking about what made me more confident in myself just as a woman coming into like my womanhood and what made me be able to speak with conviction, com confidence, power and just like knowing that I'm able to add something to any discussion and that all of my qu the questions that I may have are valid because growing up. I shouldn't even say growing up. I'm going to talk about like early adulthood because growing up, obviously I did. I, well, not obviously, but I did not graduate high school, which led me not to graduate, not graduating um, college at the, at an earlier age where most people are doing that. Um, I had my daughter at 19, like I said earlier in the conversation, and I didn't get that chance to um, go back to school. The reason that I didn't graduate, though, was just like I said, my mom had... Um, Four daughters, two of my younger sisters are like 13 years younger than me. So I, she needed a lot of support and I ended up just ended up having to get my GED. Um, and for me, that was always like a sore, it was a sore thought for me, like something that I always hated that I never actually graduated college, um, high school. So I used to be 
really quiet and deep conversations about certain topics because I didn't feel like I knew I knew enough about whatever it was, like anything. It would be anything. Even if I felt like in my heart, I feel like I know something, I would still stay quiet because I didn't feel really confident in that. Um, I was so quiet that I wouldn't even ask questions to learn more about what it was that I wasn't sure about because I didn't want to seem stupid. I didn't want to feel like people thought I was stupid. So I would hold back. And that was like an intelligence insecurity that I basically carried through over 20 years of my life. I never, not having the opportunity to go to college um, definitely gave me that insecurity and just, you know, not being able to um, see myself excel in, and apply myself in, in certain ways. So I just never thought it was possible. I never thought that I'd be smart. I never thought that I would have something really good to say you know, in a conversation that would make sense and that I could stand by that. So I was just an insecure person, basically. I had no confidence in myself. Um, so, okay, I ended up having the twins. Um, the twins are four years old. My twin boys are four years old now. I had a conversation with my wife. We were just having a random conversation about our bucket lists. And I mentioned, you know, going back to school on one of, as one of my bucket lists, even though, you know, and for me, a bucket list is something that I almost consider as stuff I'm probably never going to get to do. Like, it's crazy. Downplaying myself again. But yeah, just, I just, you know, and so when I said it to her, like, you know, going to school is definitely a dream of mine. I want to go back to college. Like, I want to go to college and I want to have that experience and stuff like that. I just want to be able to say that I've done it and get a diploma. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in that conversation, my wife was so supportive and she was just like, what? You could definitely go back to school. Like, what are you talking about? Let's make the plan. Like, I didn't even know that's how you felt so strongly about going back to school. Let's do it. And my whole world opened up. I never thought it was going to be possible, especially after having now three children, um, one with a special need, autism. And just, I just never thought that it would be possible. Another reason that kind of like pushed me to even want to, go back to school even more was because my son one of my ch- my boys my twin boys his name's ocean he was uh, diagnosed with autism um and i really just wanted to find learn new ways to be able to advocate for him and to be able to speak up for him you know i didn't want to be this not confident person and i really wasn't thinking about my confidence at the time when i thought about starting school i was just really thinking about you know, learning the terminology and learning different ways to support him through this journey that we're going to now have with autism. Um, So we started looking at different courses. I know that I'm not strong in math. So I was like, you know, math is definitely, we need to make sure we don't have something that has math in it. Um, I'm really good at writing. I love writing and I love just learning about history and justice and fighting for people and helping people and, you know, change, things like that. So I started the social work course. And this this course was perfect for me. Um, another key note to just keep noted is that I did a fast track course. So my course was only two years. Okay, it was supposed to be three years, three and a half, depending on what you know what was going on. But my course ended up only being two years because I did the fast track course. And the reason I chose fast, fast track was because... In my mind, when I started school, I'm like, first of all, I'm already grown. I ain't a little kid. I don't have time to be sitting there all these years. I have children. Like, I need to get this done. And I was looking at myself as a, I'm just going to probably be a C student. Um, I literally told my wife, told the people around me when I started school, I'm like, listen, don't stress me. Don't pressure me. I'm going to be a C student and I'm okay with that. I just want to get this diploma and I'm going to do the best I can, but it's going to probably be C's, Okay. And that's the confidence level that I have for myself. And literally, you guys, I was writing eight page essays, writing reviews on topics about Canadian history, literally just opening my eyes up through new lenses and and like just looking at the world differently. I started asking questions in class and started getting back my grades for like these different assignments and exams and things that I would have. And I was always at the top always getting A+, plus, A+, plus, 100, 100, 100, 98, you know, like really, really high scores and doing so well that over time, I literally became fearless with my skills, like, and my ability to like, just communicate and ask questions and to do these, do this work and to pass and to like, actually be up in the high class with the high class. 
<laughs> During my time in school, I literally taught underprivileged youth in Colombia. I taught them English, so I became a teacher. That's also what was one of my dreams was to become a teacher because I love that. Like I love just being a teacher. I love feeling needed. I love being able to give something to somebody that they can use and and like can help change their life. I literally started seeing myself different after all of these experiences. I could have never literally imagined how much different I would look at myself and how I would be after going through my college experience in the social work field because the social work field is what I feel like was a big part of it. I don't know if in any other field I would have came out this strong. I'm literally so proud of me now, you guys. I know that every question that I have is valid. I feel so confident in my ability to add something to any conversation that's put before me, even if I'm wrong because before... It was a part of like, I don't want to feel stupid. Now I'm like, I'll still say something and you could tell me if I'm right or wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm literally okay with being wrong and asking more questions to learn more without dismissing myself as, as stupid or dismissing my question as stupid or not valid. Literally, we've been taught this. No question is stupid. And I still felt that way. So I, I know it's a real thing, you know. And But what's stupid is not being able to open yourself up to ask questions to make better sense of things. You know, it's called growth. Um, right now I'm not practicing as a social worker. You know, I have, like I said, I have young children and the whole schedule of, of that social work stuff just wouldn't work out for me right now. But the stuff that I did take away from school changed me as a person. I learned so much about how to advocate for not only myself, for my family, my children, the people around me, injustices that I see. I learned so much about the histories around me that I, did, I wasn't even aware of. And I was born here in this country and I was not aware of so much that has gone on here. Um, I learned so much about autism and just like, cause there was actually an autism course through my so social work, work course, which I ended up taking and, and, and definitely opened up my eyes to my son and just like what to expect and just how to, you know, navigate that whole thing. Um, the main takeaway for me though, was obviously my, my self growth, just the fact that I could see so clearly how much I changed since accomplishing the dream of graduating college. And, and I think it was it it was one of the hardest things. I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life was was go through that college course um, with my children being so young. I think I remember crying a lot and I remember having the most anxiety that I've ever had in my life. I used to have so much anxiety um, with just like the, the loads and the... Because like I said, my, my assignment and exam load was doubled in less time because I fast-tracked my course. So yeah, I just... I just, I was pushing through it. It was so much stress. I was losing hair. I had like carpal tunnel from my wrist hurting me from always being on the computer. But it was all so worth it. It was all so worth it because at the end of the day, when I went to graduate and I walked across that stage, I was graduating with the highest of honors that you could graduate with for that program. And um, it's probably one of the proudest days I've ever had in my life. Like I'm so proud of that moment. And that was that was something that I'll just never forget. Like I'll, I'll, I, I, it put my, it put me putting myself on a pedestal and looking at myself like, you're that bitch. Like you fucking did that. I can't believe you. I can't believe I did that. And I can't believe I have a diploma, a diploma to look at with the, the highest honors. And I went in thinking I was going to be a C student. Just imagine that. Never dismiss yourself. Never doubt yourself. Go for those dreams that are, that are on your bucket list that you think you'll never have. Like actually, Take the steps towards it and see because you never know. You never, you never know. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I've said enough. I think I've given you guys a lot to kind of understand where, how I thrive so much off of communication and connection and just why I keep doing what I do and why you keep seeing me in all these new platforms and avenues and channels and pages. And it's always something new going on with Chatty Mother, but it's just literally outside of leaving memories for my kids and just sharing my voice with the world. It's literally a form of therapy almost for me to just be out here and just be able to communicate and, and, and be creative with my communication. Um, so I'm never going to stop and look out for more. If you listen to this whole thing and you made it to the end, you're absolutely amazing. I really appreciate you. Thanks for the support. Thank you for taking the time to listen, to get to know more about Chatty Mava. And stay tuned for more amazing episodes. I have a lot more coming up for you guys. There's a lot more that this, this podcast is going to have. So stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe, following. Make sure you give us a, a five-star rating. And love and light until the next episode. Bye.